Hello again, another lesson, and in this session we are learning about cathode ray oscilloscopes. By the end of this session, you'll learn how to use a CRO or cathode ray oscilloscope for simple applications. See how a CRO enables signals to be analyzed and measured. Use a cathode ray oscilloscope to determine the period, amplitude, and frequency of a wave. And that is it. In the instrument, you have a cathode ray tube, like the old television picture tubes. It's the same thing. And you have a power supply that supplies power to different parts of the circuits uh, for, for it to operate. You have a Y amplifier, which is your axis Y amplifier of the, the input signal. X amplifier, it amplifies the signal, input signal horizontally. You have a trigger amplifier and time-based generator. Now, all these communicate with each other to make that cathode ray operate and show you the, the input signal as a waveform or uh, the, the way it actually is. Now, we're not going into the details of uh, this, the, this instrument itself, how it's operating. We're just going to introduce it to you and show you how you can identify different knobs and buttons and switches and how you can use them. This is a simplified diagram of the internal workings of the CRO. The Y amplifier deals with the size or amplitude of the signal, the vertical part. The X amplifier deals with the time taken for the signal or the horizontal part of the signal. The, the X and Y amplifiers then deflect it in a variety of directions which will enable you to see the waveform. How it works is less important than how you use it. So we get to that one then. The front of the, uh, the oscilloscope is, this is a basic form of an oscilloscope. Single channel oscilloscope, you only have one input. Uh, MBC plug or connector here, so you can only plug in your probe only one probe in there and that is one channel oscilloscope at your own college or industry where you are you might have a two channel oscilloscope or you might even have a four channel oscilloscope but if you learn the principle they're all the same the power switch there's always a power switch turns the power on and off the ground ac dc switch this switch allows either AC, a capacitor cuts out the DC, or DC alone. And also allows both AC and DC parts to be measured. Ground avoids both AC and DC signals and produces just a straight line. This allows for setting up an initial reference point clear of stray AC and DC signals. So what that means is, if you put it on ground, you'll get a straight line. It might not necessarily be down in the right in the middle, but you will have to use different knobs, which we'll talk about, to bring it to the middle for initialization and making sure the, uh, the oscilloscope, your equipment is calibrated. And when you get the measurement, so your measurement is accurate. Focus focuses the electron beam onto the screen. Intensity strengthens or weakens the, the electron beam. And trigger sets up the stability of the signal shown on the screen. As long as the beam starts at the same point on the left, then the image is stable. Most oscilloscopes have an automatic as well as manual trigger. You usually use this when the waveform keeps running so fast and you can't even uh, get to see the waveform to measure it. So you use that to stabilize it. Also, you have a knob that's called time per centimeter or time per division. Uh, sets the time base of the signal to be measured. 
this time base is related to the frequency and so the setting of the time base is not necessary uh, for pure DC circuits however for anything that varies must vary uh, with regard to time so if you choose this for instance uh, you select 20 in this case millisecond what that means is every single square of this um, screen is 20 millisecond this way horizontally on the x-axis so if you have a waveform and your wave starts from the beginning and goes to let's say ends here then you have to count the uh, squares or centimeters how many centimeters are the, the divisions are there one two three four five let's say for instance ends here five times 20 milliseconds that will be 100 milliseconds that is your time period the period that it takes a time that it takes for your cycle to complete a full cycle so that's time per division which with that you can find the frequency of the uh, voltage or current that you're trying to measure volt per centimeter or volt per division uh, select a switch that one shows you how how many volts there is in every centimeter of this or every division of this wave for the waveform that you you show or you see vertically so you go let's say your waveform starts from here and it goes up to to, to here and then it continues it comes down so you go up two square or two centimeters each centimeter is for instance set at five so two times five is ten volts so your maximum volt voltage of that waveform that you're seeing is ten volts when we get to examples you'll see what i mean why shift uh, if your waveform is not right in the center you can use this to um, alter uh, the vertical position and x shift and alters the horizontal position the screen is divided into a series of one centimeter square divisions from that we can see that one complete cycle takes four centimeter along the horizontal axis in this example so it starts from here and ends here one cycle so we count all these divisions one two three four and we see what we've, we've set this time per division as uh, is on 20 milliseconds so 20 times four that will give you 20 milliseconds times four that's 80 milliseconds the time it takes for a for, for one cycle to complete is 80 milliseconds and the formula to convert time period or periodic time to frequency is 1 over t so frequency is 1 over 80 times 10 to the power minus 3 because it's milliseconds and that will give you 125 hertz that's how you use your oscilloscope to find the frequency to find the voltage of the uh, signal that you see let's say this is a voltage uh, you're measuring the voltage here not the current and you've set this on volt per division five is five volts and let's say you're measuring the voltage of a circuit of, of part of the circuit you use this uh, volt per division to set it so you can see the whole uh, waveform in the screen because uh, you as soon as you start the signal and as soon as you connect your probes to the, the part of the circuit that you want to measure you might not actually see the whole complete full wave from uh, in the display um, area so you need to keep changing the volt per division and time per division so you have a full at least 
one or two full cycle and you see from the bottom of the waveform to the top of the waveform uh, it doesn't overshoot um, outside the, the screen the display area once you've got that then and, and you've uh, adjusted the shift y shift and x shift so the waveform is symmetrical and balanced across the x axis and y axis then you can measure uh, from zero from this central line axis or central line to the top of the maximum point is three centimeters or three squares or three divisions and you've set it here at five volts so five times three as 15 volts so that means your peak value or for this for this example is 15 volts and if you were to find peak to peak value it would be 15 times 2 that that would give you the, the value from here to here as peak to peak but that is just the peak value 15 volts and then from that you can find the RMS value and the rest of it or the average value and that's how you measure voltage and frequency with with an oscilloscope now there is correct way of connecting an oscilloscope and there is a wrong way of connecting it uh, the the cro itself has a high internal impedance and it's not appropriate to connect the cro into a circuit and use it as an emitter you can't really use this as an emitter uh, you can only use it as a voltmeter and measure voltage and uh, frequencies the body of the CRO is earth so it's very easy to connect that to a part of the circuit that is not earth this will create false readings and can change the circuit that is being tested the CRO is connected across the capacitor this is acceptable now in this case in this configuration as you see in the in on the screen this connection is right what we've done we've connected the probe the positive tip of the probe to the positive part of the capacitor and the earth connection of the probe to the earth to this ground and that's fine which is also connected to another equipment which is a signal generator in this case and uh, and that is the part the earth part of it but if you connect the same circuit this way what we've done you've basically connected the earth of the oscilloscope to one side of the capacitor the earth of the signal generator to the other side of the capacitor you have two earths and what you've done you've basically short circuited this capacitor and that can be really dangerous in some circuits so the same circuit if we go back to this circuit uh, that was resisted on top capacitor at the bottom now if there is the circuit is different let's say th th this is the way and you want to um, measure the voltage across the resistor this is the this is the way you connect it so the earth always has to be connected to the earth of the circuit and any other equipment around it if you have for instance you have a signal generator and oscilloscope and a circuit all the parts of the circuit all the earth should be connected to the to the earth and that's it thank you very much